Hello friends, here we are going to learn the syntax directed translations. I am going to help you to learn the important concepts of the SDTs where we are going to look at the kinds of attributes and also kinds of definitions along with how to evaluate SDT. So we are going to see the most important uh, the phase in compiler which is uh, the semantic analysis how it is going to be implemented with the help of SDTs. So you know uh, for syntax analysis uh, we have the context free grammar to produce the positive for that we have built the parsing tables and we have also looked at uh, how the parser works with the help of the table. Now using the SDTs you can design the semantic analysis. So these SDTs are going to help you this SDTs are going to help you to perform the semantic analysis but not only semantic analysis which is going to help you for various uh, features like you if you want to evaluate the given input still you can use the SDTs. So we are going to see some of them soon. We have a completed lexical analysis. We have completed lexical analysis and uh, we have also completed syntax analysis. Now we are moving to syntax directed translations. So, what is this SDT? Right? The SDT name itself says the syntax directed translation. What is the syntax directed translation? mainly SDT depends on the syntax no doubt this is is just same as you have the syntax and along with them just add some kind of translations so that you can direct them to get whatever the meaning that you want right this translation may perform semantic or may perform the evaluation or may perform the construction of the trees uh, you know it depends on what you want to do with that syntax simply this is equal to or equivalent to context free grammar along with this translations translations okay some translations required to do that every production you may add one or more translations to perform this SDTs or to and to represent SDTs and at any given time you have already known the syntax or context free grammar how we can convert this syntax into the SDTs. We are going to see that we are going to see that basically how it looks like when you have the context free grammar let us say you have E derives E1 plus E2. So what you may do here along with this this is called as you know production in the context free grammar and now what you do here something like E dot X is equal to maybe e1 dot x e1 dot e2 dot x okay something some translation is there which helps us to understand what you are going to do with this production are you going to uh, do the sum of this values are you, are you going to print the plus or are you going to construct the tree for this production what you are going to do that depends on this translation Okay, you can do anything from this but have the proper translation here. Okay, so this is what you are going to write in this SDTs. You keep the context free grammar, same grammar for every production you will add zero or more translations to it to get the meaning of this syntax. So you it will convert either into semantic or evaluation techniques. Fine. This is about SDT. So what is important in this SDT if you observe here if you, if you observe here <coughs> one is this dot x it basically talks about the attribute so what kind of property or attribute that you are going to do here so x is an attribute this is going to compute something with the help of other attributes with the help of other attributes you no need to write you know this way i can also write some other way i'm just mentioning here to understand e dot x is equal to e1 dot y plus e2 dot z but here 
how many attributes are there you see here x is there y is here and g is here now among them what you are trying to compute x y z what you are trying to compute among these three x you are trying to compute y z you are just reading using them so it's very important what you are computing and what else you are using in the translation because you are always going to look at what are you computing i am computing at this point of time this point i am computing at this point by depending on its children because even e2 are children for e right even e2 are children for e so now you need to understand there is a relation when you are going to talk about e with e1 and of course plus is there e2 when you are going to talk about the variables are non terminals you have a relationship here like e1 right e2 are the including plus are the children of e if you talk about e1 e1 is a child of e but it is the sibling to plus and e2 which sibling left sibling if you talk about plus plus is a child of e but it is the right sibling to e1 and left sibling to e2 is that clear e2 is the child of e but is the right sibling to both e1 and plus so this relation exists i'm writing here you should know parent child terminology and siblings left and right sibling okay these three words you are going to use while computation or while computing but at particular uh, the non terminal at e you are computing by depending on e1 and e2 so attributes you might be using x y z but you are computing x but you are not computing y and z because they might be already computed that's why you are using in this production okay fine this is about the sdt what is sdt which has a syntax and also you have some translation so you need to now direct a uh, syntax direct to the translations as per the mentioned translations right okay let's move this kind of sdts can be used in various places right it's just not only to perform semantic analysis one application is very clear you can use to perform or to design semantic analysis what semantic analysis is required basically to do the type checkings or to check the variable particular variable is declared or not right to check the function prototype like how many arguments are there what is, what are the uh, what is the written type of the function and what is the uh, type of each argument function compatibility so to perform semantic analysis you require the sdts and if you want to evaluate any expression you are i have written you have written the grammar for generating expressions suppose you are generating a plus b then if you want to understand what is a plus b is it concatenation of a and b or is it addition of a and b so to understand it you can use the sdt to evaluate you can evaluate the inputs and you can see the output are they concatenating or are they adding it to evaluate expressions and sometimes you can also convert to convert expression from one form to other like from one form like infix to prefix something like that one form to other form example one form to other means maybe you want to convert infix to prefix or postfix or maybe you have given a uh, prefix you want to convert into infix or postfix and so on you want to convert that way you can use right i'm not writing all but depends on your translation it could happen some other for conversions something like this which one is possible not possible you keep trying it if you have any algorithm definitely up, uh, definitely you can uh, write a translation okay. any kind of translation from one to other not only this you can also convert one system to other system to convert one number system 
to other system. If you have studied digital logic, like you want to convert a decimal number to the binary, something like this. You want to convert a decimal to binary or you want to convert decimal to octal or you want to convert binary to decimal binary to decimal and so on it's not just uh, restricted to this you can convert one form to other one number system to other number system so here basically these SDTs are very powerful SDTs is a very powerful tool can be used to perform many kinds of translations like basically you may use for semantic but you can also use to produce three address code for given C expression but you can also use the three address code or you can construct you can also write SDT to produce parse tree or to produce syntax tree it's not restricted to only this parse tree or to produce syntax tree if you want for the given expression you can produce a lot of things okay some of the uh, features or applications with the help of SDT and mainly here you can see semantic analysis how do you uh, how do you uh, perform or you know how do you convert a given C expression to three address code or how to construct the parse tree or syntax tree or even even you can convert our uh, expression from one form to other form you can evaluate expressions like a runtime what system does you can also do with the help of SDTs to understand okay it's not just limited to this one but you understand you can do anything which has the uh, practically possible with the help of programs that you can do with the help of SDTs now the first topic in SDTs the first topic in SDTs is attributes you know when you look at SDTs when you look at SDTs the first thing that comes into picture what is that attribute what actually doing it you know, for that you should know why we are writing attributes what type of attributes we have right if the grammar is given to you can you identify that attribute type because there are two kinds of attributes 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 one is inherited attribute inherited attribute what it does inherited attribute have you studied somewhere in inheritance it's similar to that and another one is synthesized attribute synthesized attribute a grammar may contain one or more attributes or zero or more attributes you can say that right what is this inherited attribute and synthesized attribute first point here if you want to compute if you want to compute at any place like I told what do you mean by computation right you have LHS and RHS always remember you have LHS is equal to RHS where do you compute you always do this way that means the computation happens here we compute here we compute here and we are using this RHS here right you are using RHS but you are computing at LHS simple expressions I'm, ta I'm talking about if you talk about C expressions you know uh, before converting into simpler forms even RHS are also you, ha you have some kind of expressions they again compute in the within the RHS like you write X plus plus in RHS side also there are some computations may happen but when you simplify further there are again sub expressions inside anyhow so try to understand in simple expression when somebody writing x is equal y plus z you are computing x you are not computing y and z they are already having a meaning you are using them to compute x so you should know what I am trying to explain here I am trying to compute x with the help of y and z okay so very clear and no confusion here at all because I'm going to use this meaning inside these definitions. 
Okay, inherited attribute. If you want to compute at one place, like x, if you want to compute at one place, what you can do, either you can depend on parent or you can depend on siblings. Of course, this definition slightly modified later on when you go for the definitions of SDTs. These are not the definitions of SDTs. These are the definitions of attributes. Remember that. When they ask about find the attribute types, it's different from find the definition of the grammar. Remember this word, find the definition of the grammar is a different question from find the attribute type within the grammar. So we are going to look at what do you mean by attribute. Again, I explained here, when I am writing something like e dot x is equal to even dot y plus even dot z. When I write this, here how many attributes are there? x, y, z. Because these attributes will help you to understand what you are doing with the non-terminals. What you are doing with the non-terminals. Sometimes you do not need attributes. You may just you know multiply with 10. It's fine, 10 is a constant. You do not need anybody's support, right? 10 is a constant data, you can say that. Here x, y, z are attributes. You are computing at x. And you are using y and z means you might be already computed within the grammar somehow. Okay? With the help of definitions later on. So now, what is inherited attribute? Inherited attribute is nothing but you are trying to compute at one place or at particular non-terminal by depending on its parent or its siblings. But I don't know exactly whether I depend on all or I don't depend on anyone. So it depends. It depends on the grammar. It depends on what you want to do with the production. Okay. Here the computation depends on. Computation means LHS basically. Depends on parent or 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 and both comes here. Parent and or siblings. Okay. The siblings may be either left or right, or both. Now here, there's a first point here, right? That's the first point here. Here, computation depends on computation depends on children. Depends on children. Computation depends on children. What is the example for this? Suppose I have S arrow A star let's say E plus let's say F. This is my production. I might be writing translation meaning for it but forget about the remaining productions of the grammar. Here I might be computing let's say E dot X I might be using the value of the root maybe plus a minus let's say minus f dot x it's fine just look at what I'm trying to do I am trying to compute at e I'm depending on parent that is s I'm also depending on right sibling f but I say it's depends on parent or left sibling or right sibling that's all your choices you may depend on all if you want it so this is one kind of translation but whether you get a meaning or not when you write a grammar you should know whether you should depend on parent or you should depend on siblings or do you want to depend on both of them okay, if you are depending on siblings whether whether uh, is it better to depending on left sibling or right sibling or on both so it depends on evaluation technique you will be getting to know that you should depend on left or right okay Mostly we depend on left siblings as we are going from left to right in top down or bottom up. We always go from left to right. So in the SDDs definitions, we only follow from left to right. It means I can depend on the left siblings as I am scanning from left to right. So I will not know about right siblings as they are not evaluated yet. Okay. So one of the important concepts here. And what about this one? S derives, let's say, S1 star S2. What I am going to do here, s dot x is equal to s1 dot y, here multiplication is there but internally I may be doing it's a plus, that's fine, s2 dot y, it's okay. For, for outside the world, uh, the, for, the, uh, for the outside the world it is multiplication, that's a syntax, but inside the language 
the multiplication means addition so somebody want to confuse the outside world they write multiplication but actually it does addition sometimes this kind of you know secrecy required to you know uh, to give production to your code so you you know even though you release this code outside nobody can understand because internally the meaning could be different fine this is about you know inherited and synthesized when it is inherited it can depend on parent or siblings when it is synthesized it should depend on child or children okay so this is the important fund for both inherited and synthesized both inherited and synthesized let's look into examples without examples you know you uh, without examples you uh, it, this uh, definition may not uh, helps you to solve the exam questions okay i want you to understand what actually the examples are having so i have a very big grammar this is kind of sdt okay this is sdt and there are many productions there are many productions now the question is i want to identify the attribute type i don't want to identify the grammar this grammar definition might be anything we'll see in the future okay now here how many attributes are there the question is about just type find the attribute type only oh here very important uh, i want to find the attribute this type what is this type okay this type is dash this type is it inherited or synthesized this type is used many times here here also you have used type to third time you are computing the type three times see that only you always look at lhs side lhs side rhs we will see whenever you need it so now this three types three times you are using the type attribute and what is the type attribute is it inherited or synthesized of course both is a very difficult question we should not say none of this fine now at this point of time you should observe like this d arrow t l where are you trying to compute at l at l you are trying to compute at l you are trying to compute and that l depends on whom it depends on t t t is what sibling t is what sibling left sibling oh that means in the first in the first line that's in the first production that l depends on left sibling you know when it depends on parent or left or right sibling what we call it as it is inherited attribute so at this point of time at this point of time this type we got to know it is inherited concept but doesn't mean that whole grammar we are uh, following inherited when we say type is inherited in entire grammar the type follows the inherited attribute definition then only from this we say type is inherited okay sometimes it is inherited sometimes synthesized we don't say anything anything it is neither inherited nor synthesized we go for option d okay the attribute the same attribute should not follow this both okay try to understand second one the l arrow l1 comma id so now where are you trying to compute here at l1 at this position you are trying to compute at l1 by depending on whom parent by depending on parent so you are trying to depend on parent you can see that you are trying to depend on l so what is this definition when something you are computing by depending on parent is called as what inherited attribute definition so this is also inherited it's fine if this is also following inherited it, your job is over but this type you see that you are depending you are computing at t you are computing at t at this point of time i'm just writing here t arrow integer what's happening here you are computing at t but depending on its child that integer is child of t right by depending on integer by depending on integer so what is this called as is it inherited no right at this point of time is synthesized now the question is i am talking about in this old grammar i am not talking about particular production in the exam if they ask about something like this 1 2 3 4 what is the type at production 1 then very clear inherited what is the type at production 2 it is inherited what is the type at production 3 nothing because you have not used it at all right so you can as of anything at 4 it's following synthesized but in the whole sdt what is type it is neither inherited nor synthesized you can't say both inherited and synthesized because if every production is following inherited 
then we say whole grammar that is inherited and in every production it is following synthesized definition then whole grammar that type is synthesized but sometimes following inherited sometimes following synthesized it is neither inherited nor synthesized because i can't use this grammar is following inherited concept i can't say the grammar is following synthesized because everywhere is not synthesized so now at this point of time there is none of this because it is neither inherited nor synthesized you can't choose any of these three and i know that you might be thinking that it's inherited and synthesized yes but not whole grammar only in some grammar some productions inherited some production synthesized but in whole grammar the type is neither inherited nor synthesized because i can't say whole grammar the type is inherited and also i can't say the whole grammar type is synthesized okay sometimes inherited sometimes synthesized that means in the whole grammar it is not following inherited it is also not following synthesized completely that's why we go for option d carefully choose this carefully choose it okay next so i'll give the time can you do it quickly that what is that attribute x what is the attribute x okay carefully you do it what is this you know here when there are so many attributes here i have not mentioned anything right so this is s1 2 there is an order always when there are many s comes in the same production so you follow s s1 s2 s3 and so on okay by looking at the translations only you will understand what is that subscript okay now what is this attribute x we are talking about attribute x now at every statement you should understand the first statement s arrow s1 s2 now where are you trying to compute at this place means at this s s dot x you are computing by depending on its child s1 and s2 children so you are depending on s1 and s2 its children right so what we say this is synthesized concept you are depending on children synthesized okay synthesized and s means s arrow s1 again it is this place by depending on s1 s1 is the child right of s so by depending on its child only plus 1 1 is the constant don't look at anywhere so here also that x is synthesized because it depending on its child now the next one is dot x is equal 1 you are computing here you are computing here also you are computing here also you are computing then s depends on no one here that x you can include in inherited or synthesized because you are not depending on any one one is the constant so that you can assume anything that x following because remaining uh, productions following synthesized now you assume synthesized because there is no use of assuming inherited now so i can assume this x is you know synthesized so whole grammar i can say that x is synthesized i can't say whole grammar x is inherited because this two are not inherited concept inherited attribute only dep depends on what parent or siblings but this attribute depends on its children its children so we call it as synthesized but third production is very special you are computing it as by depending on no one because the one is a constant the id could be the 100 or 1000 but still s dot x will take one s dot x will take one okay when you are when you are looking at synthesized your focus always be this lhs by depending on its child child always there in the rhs side so you must compute only at this place then only we can say that you are depending on its ch children right next again we have a grammar to understand what is that a type what is the type of x attribute x is dash is it inherited or synthesized okay please try to answer it as quickly as possible now now you understood what is the definition of the attribute right so i'm going to help you without you know writing many things you can simply observe see focus must be here this one you are computing at this point 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 you know translation could have more statements by you you know separating with semicolon or comma remember that here semicolon is there so there are two different statements here and you are computing at this point t you are also computing at t among this six computations how many are actually x this three are y so don't look at them we don't need this uh, we don't need this three statements at all 
but we need these three statements here the e means at this place and you are depending on e1 and e2 so that's actually called as what children e1 and e2 are children of e and this e is here and that depends on what itself plus 1 itself is okay that anybody can depend on right so this one can be used for any purpose you can use an inherited or synthesized no you no a problem because itself depending that's okay that has no issue at all and t dot x is equal to 1 you are computing at this t not depending on anyone so these two places you can use an inherited and synthesized but the first one is purely depends on its children that means you can assume these are actually following synthesized concept you can say x is synthesized because other two these two uh, statements can be used in any any so that's why i'm assuming it is synthesized because of the first statement is purely depending on its child its children e depends on its children okay that's about x that's about x is what this x is synthesized now the next question is the same grammar what is y because now the focus is on only y's don't look at the this side this this don't look at this e dot x at all only look at this now what is e e is here very depending depending on its children right e1 and e2 so it's very easy y is at this point of time synthesized at this point of time but at this point of time you are computing at e by depending on t t is the child of e so it means here also y is synthesized and what about this you are computing at this by depending on no one that means the two is a constant that you can blindly assign so that you decide what you want to say y but before that this both of the both the statements are saying the y is synthesized so this one also can follow it so we say synthesized okay very interesting question this one and previous one so how to identify the type of attribute fine okay very very good question that i have seen in the gate but the gate question was different the gate question was different i hope you are able to see it but let me write if you are not able to see let me write it this one is d arrow t l this one is t arrow integer it is integer t arrow real l arrow l1 comma id l arrow id so we have some uh, translations here let me help you to understand them l dot i n which is equal to t dot type okay next one is t dot type is equal to integer and t dot type is equal to real l1 dot in is equal to l dot in so another one is just a function don't worry add type is a function name which does something what it does something it does it makes an entry into the symbol table it makes entry into the symbol table so the type will be added that l dot in is added to the id dot entry and another one is just symbol table functionality like you, you make some changes to the a symbol table or you will make entry id dot entry you are going to make as some l dot in that's fine l dot in now how to understand this translation now the question is about attribute in only right i'm not talking about whole grammar i'm not talking about uh, other attributes I'm only talking about in attribute in whole grammar. It's not directly whole grammar. What I'm saying, the only look at in in the whole grammar. Don't look at every attribute in the whole grammar. I don't need it. Okay. So now the computation. Where is that in? Where is that in? Okay. So focus here completely. L dot in. So where is it? One computation is here. Another in here. 
that's it you have to look at remaining places you are not computing remember this two are functions so we don't look at this arguments at all and here lhs rhs lhs rhs remaining two are actually about type okay that you may take it as homework okay anyhow other slides are there so my question is what is in here what is in in is dash okay this in is what is it inherited or synthesized or none of them okay the first one l you are computing at this place right by depending on t t is the left sibling who can depend on the sibling inherited at this point of time the in is inherited the name itself says inherited at this point of time l1 you are computing at this place by depending on its parent who can depend on its parent inherited so when you look at both of them the in is inherited that's it that's it don't look at other two because they are computing type attribute so type attribute if you want to see the next question i'm answering i'm going to answer here but you do as homework type is depending on integer int is actually its child so t dot type the type at this place the t you are computing at t by depending on its child that is synthesized and t dot type t is here and the child is real so there also you are uh, depending on child means synthesized in both of them t dot type the type is synthesized so type in is inherited attribute but type is here synthesized okay there are two questions here only we are asking about in but other question take the same example but solve it what is type if you can't see this table you already have the table right type at this point of time is a synthesized i've just explained that okay this is all about attributes now the next important topic is uh, definitions of sdt you know when you look at sdt you have definitions that actually talks about the specifications how do you write the sdt how do you write sdt but there is other part of the sdt which is evaluations and implementations so one is specifications will help us how to write the grammar with the help of attributes with the help of translations other side is the implementation implementation so how do you evaluate the sdt the second part we'll see slowly but the first part how you write sdt is important for that you need attributes we understood attributes but that's not enough we don't use all properties of attributes as it is we look at we use them in some form with the help of definitions there are two definitions one is l attributed definition you can also call as call as l attributed grammar another one is s attributed definition also call as you can call as it can be called as uh, l attributed grammar so attributed grammars are two types one is l attributed other one is s attributed syntax directed definitions right uh, we have how many types two types we have two types okay one is l attributed grammar also called as l attributed definition okay l attributed grammar also called as l attributed definitions you, you can also say it's sdds right there are two types of sdds syntax directed definitions we have two types of definitions l attributed definition and s attributed definition it's for the grammar not for the just attribute remember that it's about the grammar the whole grammar we call it as l attribute or l attributed or s attributed then what are the definitions for this two the first point is how the attributes are used are you going to use the attribute directly or restricted here s attributed grammar is so easy where the attribute always follows synthesized concept that means at any place you if you want to compute you, you have to depend on the child only you have to depend on children but here 
there is restriction you can depend on parent or only left sibling but you can't go for right sibling parent and left sibling that's it but you should not go for right sibling parent here computation depends on computation at any node or computation depends on depends on parent or left sibling this are you can act to, uh, can also act as and remember that left siblings so this is about l attributed grammar so in the l attributed grammar uh, it can depend on parent or left sibling there is one more you can also depend on child or children this is a new concept if i don't write this children you might be assuming it is inherited but it also can follow synthesized concept so it's a very important grammar it's a you know bigger class compared to the s attributed class here you will find a lot of grammars compared to this s attributed because you the attribute can follow parent or left sibling or it can also use the children to compute its value when it is um, s attributed the computation just depends on children computation depends on children okay so here is very important one that's the first one and second let me write first here here the translations must be at the end translations must be at must appear only at the end in the production must appear only at the end of the production you cannot keep in the middle of the production or beginning so all the translations you see they are at the end suppose i have a production something like x arrow something like a b then the translation must be only at the last you can't keep in between a and b or before a and b but whereas this l attributed in the l attributed grammar translations have a no restriction translations can appear anywhere in the production can appear anywhere in the production maybe begin or maybe end or maybe somewhere in the middle it's fine like i can write x arrow uh, i can keep in the beginning if i want a b or i can keep x arrow a in the middle also i can keep the translation or i can keep x arrow a b i can also keep at the end depends on the logic or depends on the meaning that you want to produce from the syntax these are the two important points to define the definition of the sdts okay first l attributed definition what is l attribute definition the attribute must or computation at attribute that depends on children or parent or left sibling so it can follow synthesized concept or some restriction on inherited other than the right sibling it can follow just like inherited concept translation can appear anywhere so no rule for translation at all computation depends on children for synthesized or s attributed grammar and the all the translation only at the end of the production because it this uh, you will compute mostly you will compute at x by depending on its children so it's going to use the translation at the end somehow and these two definitions also have evaluation these only specifications how do you write uh, the sdt but uh, there are no every uh, sdt has two parts one is the definition that's attributed concept other one is the implementation evaluation concept so implementation evaluation may take little bit uh, while before that we'll try to identify the grammar from the given sdts so i'll give an sdt you tell me what definition it is following when we say the definition following if it is following these two points then we say l attributed if you are following these two points we say s attributed there is a relation if it is following these two points it is s attributed grammar if the grammar is s attributed can i call l attributed because this is depending on only children but this can depend on any of these three 
So if I am following only children, I am also satisfying this. Here, translations should appear only at end, but here anywhere, if I am appearing at end, still I am satisfying this. Somehow, every S attributed grammar is also L attributed grammar. If you want to see the relation, all S attributed grammars, you want to see all grammars, all S attributed grammars, grammars, let's keep here, let's keep here, and all L attributed, grammars keep here. So I can say every S attributed grammar is L attributed but L attributed may be S attributed or may be not S attributed. So there are two places you may see L attributed but when you see S attributed it is by definition L attributed too. Okay? You can relate these two points carefully. Okay, first question same we know the grammar but at that time we were looking at the type of attribute attribute only here we are looking at whole grammar here this grammar is what this grammar is it l attributed or s attributed okay is this grammar what is this sdt what definition it is following l attributed or s attributed remember l attributed only never happens remember that if the grammar is s attributed okay only this one sorry s attributed only never happens why is that because when the grammar is s attributed it is also l attributed so this is never happens this option wherever you see don't choose ever because every s attributed is l attributed but grammar can follow l attributed only why because if the grammar is not s attributed definitely i am following l attributed only so this may happen but this never happens i can't say s attributed only i can say s attributed but i can't say s attributed only because every s attributed is what l attributed so carefully this option be ignore all the time because of only the word only word it is possible both l and s because if it is s definitely it is both okay and none of this might be possible grammar if it is not following both of them then it might be the problem like somewhere you are computing using right sibling that never happens in L attributed as well as S attributed. So you can go for none of this. Okay, let's look at uh, each one what it is doing. Uh, if when you look at the translations, all the translations at the end, that means there is a possibility S attributed, maybe L attributed, right? You do not know exactly. But we know translations are at the end. So one thing is done. Now go to the attribute computation, L you are computing at this place by depending on t means left sibling oh that never happens in s attributed grammar i am very clear it is not s attributed how did i conclude because somewhere in the grammar i saw you are depending on the sibling okay that's very easy to say not s attributed but i can't conclude now is it l or not because here it looks like L, but in the future, if you're depending on right sibling, if you're depending on right sibling, the grammar is not L attributed. So have, you know, check in every pro production. Now here it's fine, L depends on T, that means it depends on left sibling. Now here, L1, here, that depends on L means parent, it's fine. In L attributed, you can depend on parent, you can depend on left sibling, even you can depend on child if you want. So here, no competition, leave it. Here, you are computing a T by depending on its child. So here, depending on child, here, depending on parent, here, depending on left sibling. So I'm using all the concepts required for L attributed. So definitely, it is L attributed, but not S attributed. It is L attributed. It is L attributed. It's following L attributed definition. So we can call this grammar is L attributed grammar. So it is L attributed only. It means L attributed but not S attributed. Okay? If you look at the previous uh, this class diagram, the grammar is present here outside S attributed, S attributed class, but inside L attributed class. Grammar is present somewhere here. Okay? okay can you try this? I'll give the time. Can you try this? Find out what is this SDT.
look at all the translations are at the end so there is a possibility grammar is s attributed but not clear so first look at that now i told this one is 1 and this one is 2 now you are computing at s you are computing at this point by depending on its children oh that means there is a chance of s attributed grammar and here you are computing at s by depending on its child s1 that means it is s attributed concept and here you are computing at this but you are not depending on anyone that's fine this can be in any grammar but this two only you know this two happening what computing computing by de by depending on its children now when i say it is s attributed it is also l attributed so it's s attributed grammar i am not talking about what type of attribute i am talking about what type of grammar both are different questions what type of attribute then you will talk about x what type of grammar you will talk about whole grammar what definition it is following s attributed grammar when the grammar is s attributed you will choose both l attributed and s attributed because i did not say anywhere s attributed i said s attributed only means it is not l attributed that's wrong right every s attributed is l attributed so definitely l attributed so l attributed next one what is this e derives e1 plus e2 okay first look at are these translations at the end okay that's very clear translations have no confusion you know you are following both it could be s yes, or it could be only l we do not know now first see there are two computations one is this one other is this one and e dot x that means you are computing at this place by depending on its child that's fine it's following both at this one e dot y you are computing at this e by depending on its children still you are following both l attributed and s attributed definitions because in both of them this kind of uh, computation can happen by depending on its children right both can do that this one e means here you are computing by depending on itself that itself anybody can do there is no restriction for that it's okay it can happen in both of them e depending on t t means child again this can happen in both of them right inherited you can depend on child you can depend on parent you can depend on left sibling in synthesis in the in s attributed grammar in, in s attributed grammar you can depend on only child in l attributed you can depend on parent you can depend on left sibling you can depend on child l attributed s attributed so do not worry about inherited synthesized concept here okay now this depending on child can happen in both the type of definitions t depending on no one right depending on no one just constants one and two then fine this uh, this one and this one can happen anywhere in both uh, but see here you are depending on child 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 means you are strictly following synthesis so it is also going to happen in both l attributed and s attributed so it is going to be both it's going to be both so each computation carefully look at everywhere except you know i'll just mark them except this one this can happen anywhere itself and this is a constant you are taking that is not looking at anybody and this one this three don't look at because they don't depend on anyone so don't, don't don't look at it but other three will decide the answer in other three purely they are depending on child or children then that depending on children competition depends on children can happen in l attributed grammar can happen in s attributed grammar and all the translations are at the end that can happen in both of them that's why it's satisfying both the definitions but the grammar is following s attributed then it is l attributed so you can use any kind of evaluation you wanted to implement this you wanted to evaluate this you can follow s attributed evaluation or you can also use l attributed evaluation that will come in a while we'll see them soon okay i have already given it uh, the same grammar uh, just try to answer it okay give me a second Okay, try to understand what is this SDT. I did not ask to evaluate. Remember that I am only asking about what is this SDT. What is this SDT? Uh, 
I hope you already have a grammar. So try to. understand computation at each production what kind of translation is used here and then conclude assume all the translations are given at the end because I did not mention within the production so it's just a semantic rule which is there let's say outside only do not assume anywhere when they are given separately then do not include inside So these are the rules. There is one more here. So I am keeping the bigger bigger parentheses here. Okay. Okay. Don't look at. You don't need it right now. Right now, I'm not evaluating. So don't worry. What is there here? And here also there is add type. So don't look at these functions. They does something. No need to worry what it does right now. As we are not evaluating this SDT, we are only understanding what type of this grammar is okay this sdt is dash for that first assume translations are at the end so it can happen in both l attributed grammar and s attributed definition now you are computing at l so we are computing at l by depending on whom by depending on left sibling that never happens in s attributed definition so grammar is very clear it is not s attributed grammar because it's not following s attributed definition clear not as attributed because of this l depends on t that means l depends on its left sibling l can't depend on left sibling in the s attributed definition now t you are computing at t by depending on its child integer its child of t that can happen in l attributed now onwards focus only on l attributed t you are computing at t by depending on its child okay that can happen in l attributed now l1 you are computing at this place l1 L1 and by depending on L, L is a parent. Okay, in L attributed grammar, you can depend on parent. Here, there is no computation. Add type is a function, it does something. Don't worry about it. So, here, no problem. So, in all the places you are following L attributed definition, the grammar is L attributed only. Okay, so very, very important example for you. Very, very important example for you. Okay, now some questions we have. So, it's theoretical question that is. In bottom-up evaluation, basically bottom-up evaluation is used for S-attributed grammars. Bottom-up evaluation, or you can use this evaluation, can also be used in L-attributed. But bottom-up parsing is specially used for S-attributed, but bottom-up evaluation can be used even L-attributed also. The, so when you look at L-attributed, let me explain first what is happening in L-attributed. L-attributed grammars are concept even S attributed concept. In both of them, we have evaluations. You can call it as L attributed evaluation and S attributed evaluation. If the S attributed grammar you are using implementation or evaluation, then you can call S attributed and evaluation. If you are doing evaluation with the help of L attributed grammar, you can call L attributed evaluation. Okay, here what happens? You have both inherited concept concept and synthesized concept so you will go from top to bottom also you will try to evaluate going bottom to up bottom up so you are going to do both the things if you want to understand if you want to understand inherited then you must go down if you want to understand the synthesized attribute concept you must go up so these two are together here you need to go from top to down somehow and you should go from bottom to up so both the things are there here but here s attributed evaluation you only go from bottom to up evaluation because this purely depends on bottom up parsing but in in both of them bottom up evaluation is there but here top down also there top down also there but it doesn't mean that top down parser here bottom up is there doesn't mean that bottom up parser but here it purely follows bottom up parser or you can say reverse of rmd concept reverse of rmd concept but one thing if it is grammar is as if the grammar is a certificate evaluation you can use this technique or you can also use this technique why because every s attributed grammar also l attributed so rather than using only this bottom up parsing concept you can use sometimes you evaluate like top down sometimes you evaluate like bottom up both the things can be done 
right for the s attributed evaluation but s attributed also, also follows the uh, bottom up parsing concept you can only use this one right always if for the exam point of view just blindly follow this if there is an answer using evaluation just follow this just follow this you evaluate using l attributed concept so what is the l attributed evaluation i'm going to come to that don't worry about what is this evaluation but i want you to understand you have two mixed concepts like you need to go from top to down you need to go from bottom to up to understand the attributes of the sdt okay to understand the attributes of sdt now this question is about bottom up evaluation it is not about bottom up parsing that's what i'm trying to say in bottom up evaluation of sdd this sdd may be s attributed or l attributed but they are talking about inherited attributes inherited attributes only can happen in l attributed definition right so they are indirectly talking about l attributed concept l attributed definition they are talking about in that l attributed you have sometimes of you, you can have inherited attributes like when it is depending on parent or left sibling of course when it depends on right sibling don't use that inherited so inherited attributes can be used if you are using inherited attributes how they are evaluated in bottom up evaluation in bottom up evaluation of this sdd inherited attributes can be evaluated if the definition is what always be evaluated no depends on the what type of sdd be evaluated only if the definition is l attributed if the definition is s attributed it's not going to evaluate inherited attributes at all right be evaluated only if the definition has synthesized attributes what is definition of synthesized attributes right definition is only two types one is l attributed another one is s attributed so this one synthesized attribute only follows synthesized attributes right s attributed grammar it's not is it's we have to say that synthesized attributes if we have there is no meaning to inherited attributes right the definition is s attributed we will never use inherited attributes so this definition contradicts our meaning completely right never be evaluated remember that if the definition is s attributed it's not useful at all we never use this statement and statement is completely wrong at all okay b is no doubt and never be evaluated is wrong because it is evaluated inherited attributes are evaluated are evaluated with the help of l attributed grammar with the help of l attributed definition okay so this is what we are going to learn in l attributed evaluation l attributed evaluation now we'll move into the last and important topic for us evaluations of sdt so far whatever you have learned is about the attributes is about uh, definition of sdt and now how to evaluate it if i have an sdt in the exam you will see some sdt find the output for the given input or find the translation for the given input or uh, find the value computed at the root for the given uh, expression or given input so how do you do that so evaluation of sdt are many types sometimes you will have attributes sometimes you may not have attributes when you don't have attributes it's so easy but when you have attributes you should follow l attributed so always remember even though you have a lot of techniques right you have sdt just remember when you have attributes with attributes if you see the attributes in the grammar simply follow l attributed evaluation no need to follow s attributed evaluation that bottom up parsing if you have an attributes you follow always l attributed l evaluation always follow l attributed evaluation of course you can follow bottom up parsing only but it will waste your time you can this can also do the same answer every s, s attributed grammar is l attributed if you are doing either if you are doing s attributed evaluation or l attributed evaluation you will get the same answer so better to follow l attributed all the time in the exam you can save plenty of time but when it comes to without attributes without attributes i want you to save the time rather than learning everything here so without attributes are there then you can follow as per the definition you know if they are asking follow top down parsing you should follow top down parsing tdp top down parsing if they are asking to follow bottom up parsing follow it 
if they are asking follow l attributed evaluation follow it because l attributed evaluation is something different compared to others follow it if they are talking about reverse of the top down parsing you should follow it like reverse of lmd if they are asking rmd you should follow the same concept you can follow anything like rightmost derivation this bottom up parsing means reverse of rmd top down parsing means lmd and they may ask reverse of lmd you should follow it reverse of lmd and if they ask reverse of l attribute evaluation you should follow it there is no such rule you should follow only this or that if they specify any kind of evaluation technique follow them if they don't mention you can blindly follow l attributed again because that might satisfy s attributed or l attributed without attributes also you can understand where the translation is there based on that you can understand so you can always follow this if nothing is mentioned nothing is mentioned you can always follow by default is this but if anything is mentioned then must follow if not mentioned follow always here so if nothing is mentioned to evaluate it then here also and with attributes or without attributes follow l attributed evaluation technique then what is l attributed evaluation how to use it you need an example okay so understand l attributed evaluation is a one kind of question nothing is mentioned in the question always follow this if something is mentioned you should know whether i should follow bottom up parsing they might mention bottom up parsing then no need to use it if already the grammar is l attributed even with this you can get the same answer so we are going to see that should i use this one or not but these two are major techniques that we have but always the l attributed evaluation prefer it if that question demands it is both s attributed and l attributed then doesn't matter what you use you will get the same answer but if the grammar is if the grammar is having no attributes grammar is not having any attributes and uh, it's uh, they are clearly saying bottom up parsing the better to follow bottom up parsing if the grammar is not l attributed anyhow i can't say that now grammar always l attributed it gives the answer right so this too somehow you should know how to learn how to use it okay is there any possibility that only bottom up parsing i use i don't know at all because if i am using bottom up parsing if the grammar is uh, what s attributed it is always l attributed right so here two kinds here s attributed so this is one more point i am talking about s attributed evaluation now what is the difference between bottom up parsing and s attributed evaluation if it is s attributed evaluation then all the translations are at the end but for this bottom up parsing translation no need to be at the end that means if they clearly specify bottom up parsing better to use it but if that is following s attributed evaluation then you can also use this one so these two points are different how they are different when you have a production yz translation is at the end then it is following s attributed but here bottom up parsing s arrow x sorry let's take the same production x arrow y and translation in the middle and i have no attributes right when i don't have an attributes i can do any evaluation i told any evaluation somebody saying bottom up parsing now you can't use l attributed because this is not s attributed grammar why because the translations are not at the end when the translations are not at the end then you can't say s attributed when it is not s attributed don't assume it is l attributed of course it is l attributed but you are not following this definition it's so something different they wanted to understand explicitly what happens bottom up parsing even though it is not s attributed somebody explicitly asking what is that reverse of rmd evaluation output so this side you should be very careful and i did not say difficult questions always you just see this two points sometimes bottom up parsing just blindly follow it if you don't understand this many things what they ask just follow them that's the best thing okay and it takes a lot of time to analyze and how did i understand this because of when there are no attributes you will see only actions like prints that that can be done in any order so follow the question and output produce output but when you have the attributes then only one technique you follow l attributed even the grammar is s attributed follow l attributed okay basically uh, s attributed means s attributed evaluation it simply follows bottom up parsing 
uses a bottom up parsing you know bottom up parsing right reverse of rmd it is bottom up parsing evolution means reverse of rmd but ill attributed evolution something different like it uses ill attributed evolution uses some kind like you know if you have some tree i'm just saying it don't worry what is it you have something here right let's say this is your uh, tree let's say then here evolution is uh, you know something like this it goes depth left once it goes it evaluates all the translations from left to right right you can see it goes up to here it goes depth left and follows just like in order concept in order concept it goes up left to right so no need to go up but it's very easy to understand when you have uh, no attributes but when you have the attributes you need to go up you need to go up when you have the attributes when you don't have the attributes you can only go left to right so better to say that depth left and follows some in order concept to evaluate the l attributed uh, computations so uses something like in order some kind of topological order i just write topological order but this topological order has a some meaning there is one kind of topological order okay that topological order basically follows something like depth left then left to right using some in order concept depth left and then left to right using in order concept so this name is very difficult to say like some people say in order some people say topological order some people say depth left and go from left to right it all looks same but try to understand how we evaluate with the help of example okay now let's come to the example to evaluate right the first example okay very simple first example e derives e plus e let me take an ambiguous grammar then e plus t or you need translations also let me write translations here e dot x is equal to e1 one e1 and e both are same here plus t dot x and e derives id here e dot x is equal to id dot value let's say multiply with 2 and t derives let's say t star id here t dot here t1 assume it to make it which t you are using t1 dot x multiply with id dot value and t derives id here t dot x is equal to id dot value multiply with 3 some you know kind of implementation now here i'll give an input just you need to find the what value is computed what value computed at the root e dot x you need to compute basically so i'm giving some input to understand the translation I'm trying to give an input 2 plus 3 star 4. Okay, 2 plus 3 star 4. Don't assume that 3, 4 is a 12, 12 plus 2, 14. That's for normal, you know, evaluation for uh, expression, C expressions. But this is not the C grammar. I've implemented my own grammar. This could give any answer depending on the translation. Okay. Now, first, are you able to construct the parsing? Then the job will be very easy. Let me help you first. How do you construct the parse string? Right, then I will do something for it. E, E1 plus T. So we got a plus. That's we got a two left side. You can see that here you got ID. And this T has to do 3 star 4. That we have production T, of course T1, T both are same. Star id and this t derives id 
But what is the problem with this parse tree? This parse tree has no translations. We want you to construct, we want to construct annotated parse tree. Then how do you introduce them? It's very important, but for this example, it's okay. Because all the translations are at the end. That means every, every level you will add one more uh, node at the end. That would be very easy. For each non-terminal, this non-terminal, I will add one specially here. That is the translation, some translation here. Okay. For this one, I will add specially here. Of course, no need to write everything because whenever you see this production, you should know what to do. Right? This thing is here. I don't need to mention it as it is. Whenever you want it, you come here and evaluate. But you should know which production it is. Just look at that. It is there as a child of E. So E to ID is a translation. And here, this T production, T star ID, it has its own translation. Right? This T derives T star ID. And this one, T derives ID is the last production. It has its own translation. Okay, you should know how to do this annotation. Right. So this translation belongs to this non-terminal. This translation belongs to this non-terminal. So you should know exactly where is that. This translation belongs to this non-terminal. Even though these both are E, but you should know exactly which translation you are applying. Okay, now which one you want to do? There are two kinds of evolutions. Now this grammar is actually see you are computing by depending on children, by depending on children, by depending on children, by depending on children. It means it is following synthesized concept. So it's grammar is attributed because all translations are at the end. Now this grammar is both attributed and L attributed. Whatever they ask now because you have attributes right. You always follow L attributed evaluation. What is L attributed evaluation? First time we are seeing it. L attributed evaluation. You follow this. L attributed evaluation means you start from the root and go depth left, right? And this ID, and then you know in order, right? Exactly same way you are following in order concept. Whenever you see the translation in this order, just execute the translation. So only translations you are going to execute and perform equivalent job here. And you go to the root and you will stop there. In this process, you see I will mark all of them. Where do you have that translation? One translation at this place. This is the first one. And then you keep on going, right? At this point you have it. And you keep on going. At this point you have the second, right? This is the second. And you keep on going. You have the third here. Keep going. This is the fourth. And after that you don't have any translation to e evaluate. So you should know what is this performing. And it definitely performs something. You should do as it is what it says. Okay. Now I'm going, I'm going to this one. That's E to ID. E to ID. This one. E dot X is equal ID dot value multiply 2. Just before doing this, look at id dot value, just assign 2 is here, 3 is here, its corresponding id value, 4 is here. Okay, you should assign properly. I hope you can assign that, right? Just id plus id star id, that means 2 plus 3 star 4. Now, the first translation, you see that e derives id. What I have to do? At a root, at this root, this subtree, at root, id dot value is 2. 2 multiply with 2, 2 multiply with 2 is 4. So here we are going to assign that e dot x, that we are, we are going to assign 2 multiply with 2 is a 4. We got a 4 here. Very clear? e dot x, that 2 multiply with 2 is a 4. That means here we are going to get 4. Okay? That's the first translation. Keep going, second translation here. The second translation is t to id, t to id. This one is nothing but id dot value multiply with 3 that you assign to the t dot x. Here you need to assign id dot value multiply with 3. So 3 multiply with 3 is 9. 9 we are going to assign here. 9 we are going to assign here. 9. Okay. This is the 9. We got a 9 there. 9. Next the third translation. The third is t derives t star id. t derives t star id. 
that is t1 dot x multiply with id dot value that you assign to t that is 9 multiply with 4 9 multiply with 4 is a 36 that will be assigned to this t 36 36 then fourth translation is e derives e plus t e derives e plus t that root is equal to e1 is the 4 plus t 4 plus 36 is going to be 40 so the e dot x the value computed at the root is 40 so they may ask the question value attribute value at e dot or what is the translation at e dot x or e simply value at e dot x for this input what is the value at e dot x that is a 40 or what is the output what is the translation that's a 40 okay I hope you understood very very easy just you need to understand what is L attributed evaluation okay here I'm not using any LMD RMD concept is not a top-down parsing it's not a bottom-up parsing concept it is L attributed depth left and just follow like in order concept in that order whichever the translation comes execute and go further execute and go further there are four translations here coming when I am traversing this tree in in order concept you just evaluate it okay Now, how to evaluate bottom-up parsing? Even that is also a question, right? You should know how to evaluate bottom-up parsing. Bottom-up parsing is nothing but reverse of RMD. So you should know the same question if I ask again, if the same question I ask again, you should know how to evaluate using reverse of RMD. Because that is also S attributed grammar. If it is S attributed grammar, S attributed evaluation or L attributed evaluation, both will give the same answer. So same question I take, I will just evaluate, you should get the same answer. But th that evaluation technique is required. How you do reverse of RMD, how you do the reverse of RMD evaluation, okay? Okay, I'm just, I'm sorry. Yeah, good. Now I'm going to do same thing with the help of L attributed evaluation. So one thing I have explained that is, this was L attributed evaluation. What is it? L attributed evaluation. Now we use S attributed evaluation. Now this grammar is S attributed, so I can use S attributed evaluation or L attributed evaluation. In the exam, always follow L attributed evaluation because the you will get the same answer for even I follow S attributed evaluation. Okay, if it is S attributed evaluation, then you can follow bottom up parsing. In the exam, they may say LR parsing or LR0, SLR1, LELR1, LR1, all are same. Even SR, shift reduce parsing, you should do the same thing, reverse of RMD. So, how to do that reverse of RMD? Again, for this input, you already know, right? Now, this time, you have, uh, you have very simple concept. Don't write any translations. You don't need it to follow the bottom of parsing concept okay let me do that e derives e plus t okay so always when you draw this uh, nodes or circles keep enough space so that you know you can fit some value whenever you compute it whenever you compute it so that is a uh, best technique always keep enough space here always keep enough space keep e here so the value comes you keep you can keep the right you can keep into right right so you remember this technique always keep some eclipse format rather than circle format so that space will help you to write the values the remaining space here t equal i can put later on now e e derives e plus t plus is done this e you need to substitute with id and t you have T star ID. T star ID.
and this t derives id so you know the values right what are the values you have this is 2 and 3 4 now what i said you don't need translations why because this is bottom up parsing bottom up parsing we are following why bottom up parsing because it is s attributed evaluation bottom up parsing evaluation the reason is the grammar is s attributed it's s attributed so you can follow bottom up a parsing evaluation okay what is bottom up parsing evaluation it is nothing but reverse of rmd what is it reverse of rmd or you can say rmd in reverse so you are going to follow reverse of rmd then first number the rmd then go for rates reverse can you number it i want you to number rmd first so that reverse will be easy rmd numbering what is this rmd numbering let's try okay when you are doing right the derivation rmd first e comes so this is the one one and then when you substitute e with this e plus t if you want i'll track for you e i have i will substitute with e plus t after this which one will be substituted t so this will become two right when this is substituted t with what t star id here when you substitute e plus t star id then this t comes into picture that t is this one it will be three i am numbering it then after that once you substitute with a t with id you will see e plus id star id then only one non terminal left e that is this one fourth one okay this numbering you should learn without this it will take time right to write a number so without this rmd sent rmd uh, sentences you should know how to number it so once you number one two three four that rmd reverse it's nothing but bottom of parsing what is its reverse if rmd when you numbered one two three this is the order to evaluate right what it is its reverse reverse of rmd what is its reverse just first you should evaluate 4, then 3, then 2, then 1, that's it. This is the order you should follow now. Who is the 4 here? Who is the 4 here? This one. So you are going to evaluate this first. 4 means this one. So what is its production? E derives id. E derives id. What is it? Id dot value. 2 multiplied with 2 is going to be assigned here. 4. That's it. What this production is saying? You numbered this one, right? This non-terminal you are going to substitute with id. Next, 3. This non-terminal you are substituting with id. So, t to id. t to id is id dot value multiply with 3. 3 multiply with 3 is 9. You assign here. Now, that's 4 is done. 3 is done. Next, 2. 2 is here. So, its production is t star id. When you substitute with t star id, the multiplication t1 multiply with id dot value. t1, that's 9, multiply with 4. 36 you're going to assign here the last one the e dot x its computation depends on e1 plus t that's uh, 4 plus 36 which will be 40 i hope you have seen the result same result with what l attributed evaluation and with the reverse of rmd that is the reason i have uh, requested but rather than numbering all these things just follow uh, you know l attribute evolution that is so easy than reverse of rmd of course this is also easy if you are able to number the pro number uh, all the nodes properly that all the non terminal substitution order properly numbered then you can answer easily but if you miss any numbering or if you wrongly numbered any of the substitution then that could lead to different answer sometimes you don't get the answer too fine so this is what we require to learn in SDTs. We have a lot of homework questions. You can see these are the with attributes. If, we, if you don't have these attributes, id.value, e1.x, this kind of attributes are not there. It's, it could be so easy for you, right? You don't need to have confusion. Just whatever they say, it, simply follow. OK, first question. You know, they are asking you to follow shift reduce shift reduce means bottom up bottom up means 
रिवर्स ऑफ एल एम डी रिवर्स रिवर्स ऑफ आर एम डी रिवर्स ऑफ आर एम डी यू हैव टू फॉलो ओके जस्ट रीड द क्वेश्चन एंड यू हैव द ग्रामर वॉट इज द ट्रांसलेशन ऑफ इनपुट इज गिवेन यूजिंग दस एस डी टी डिस्क्राइब यूजिंग द अवर रूल्स ओके दैट्स ऑल नाउ द क्वेश्चन इज वेरी सिंपल दे हैव गिवेन यू फर्स्ट यू नो लुक एट दे आर आस्किंग यू शिफ्ट रेड्यूस फर्स्ट लुक एट ऑल द ट्रांसलेशन एट द एंड all the translations at the end you are so lucky because when all the translations are at the end no attributes at all because print 1 print 2 print 3 you can follow always l attributed even though they ask shift reduce but don't follow l attributed if they ask lmd if they ask reverse of lmd they are different okay but for avoiding confusion just follow what they say your answer comes out okay now how to produce this this is the first doubt you should have how to produce this s okay now you don't need a space because you are not going to compute the values at the roots you are only printing taking the actions no attributes right so job is so easy now you need to produce xxw that's the first production right either y or xxw first you have xx so i'm going to write x is here x is here and w is here A production numbering is that's your choice. You can do any time. Now remaining you need to do with the W. What is W have? S Z. S Z. Now with this you got a Z at the last, so you also got this one. Now S has to produce X X Y Z. Now you need to go back to this again. X X. What else? You have W. With this you got X X, and remaining that W has to produce Y Z. W has to produce Y Z, but W have S Z, so you need to take that W. You have S and Z, so one Z is produced. Now S has to produce Y, so we can write Y. Done, right? Now we got whole parse tree. Using this parse tree, you need to number that R M D and then reverse of R M D to do the shift reduce evaluation. Okay, I'll just you know reconstruct it uh, properly to number it. S X X W. Then we have S G X X, and then you have W. Then W have S Z, then Y. So I hope you have understood, right? So I'm going to number this properly, one by one. first you know in rmd first i'll do rmd then reverse of rmd here i'll do rmd number here i will do reverse of rmd directly i don't get reverse of rmd so what i do first i do numbering on this then i will change to that so this one is the one and then when you substitute this one will be the two and when you substitute this one will be the next oh so easy when you substitute w comes and when you substitute s comes how so easy right now just reverse when you do the reverse who is the first here this is going to be first so first you need to evaluate this then second okay this will be the third instead of writing first second third let me write some other thing so this is going to be first in the reverse order so i'll just put a number this is a 1 it's a 2 and this will be the 3 this will be the four and this will be the fifth so you need to follow in the reverse of rmd this order so if i execute this one s with y so that is the first one you are going to evaluate right this one you are going to evaluate first what is s with y there's a print two so what is the output i am writing output here output is the two first okay i did that then i am going to evaluate this one because This is the second production W with S Z. What is the W with S Z? Is a print three. That is the next one. And next, the third one is here. What is the third one? S with X X W. S derives X X W. There is a print one. The one is the next. Next fourth one. W derives S Z. W derives S Z. There is a print three. Print three. And fifth one. 
S derives XXW, that's a print one. 23131, where is that? 23131, that's option A. 23131. So it's so easy. If you want to evaluate using reverse of RMD, just you should know how to number this RMD. Then this fifth one should be the first in the reverse. So I just renumbered it. This is a reverse of RMD numbering. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It was so easy because in, at every level you had only one non-terminal. So it's a substitution was so easy and numbering was also so easy. Okay, that's a very good question, right? So uh, now we have uh, some question you can take it as homework. Really it's also similar question that is all the translations are at the end. All the translations are at the end. And uh, here, you know, I am not doing anything. We have no translations, so don't worry. Wherever you have the translation, you just do it. For this, for this, construct the parse tree. And then, question is about any evaluation technique? LR parser. So same, LR parser, SR parser, bottom-up parser, all are reverse of RMD. Use the reverse of RMD and find the output for this. Find the output for this. What will be the output printed with this? When E plus E print plus, when E star E, it's print dot. So look at the output. When E, de e derives ID comes, then print ID dot name. If ID dot name is A, print A. If ID dot name is B, print B. So this should print the name of the variable. This two print should print plus and dot respectively, right? Now this is the homework. Just try and construct the past tree. Do this RMD numbering and then reverse of RMD. Look at the output. Okay, look at the output. Okay, very simple question you have. Um, but still, now you have the attributes. I have already explained, right? Uh, you know, did I mention anything here? Nothing mentioned. What technique you follow? L attributed evaluation. Nothing mentioned, don't go for blindly bottom up parsing. Even it is S attributed, don't consider. Why? Because every S attributed is L attributed. So always follow L attributed technique. Use L attributed evaluation. First construct this uh, parse tree then attach all the translations then follow l attributed evaluation okay so this is also homework for you and try to find out the answer and look at 4 minus 2 minus 4 multiply with 2 is your input for that you should construct parse tree then number numbering is not required because you just go from depth uh, depth left then left to right evaluate in order cons using an order concept okay this is similar to the previous one right I think you can do this, right? You need to have the practice here, same. Input is A, A, B. And for this, you need just consider it. So easy, I'm explaining. A derives A. And what A derives? S, B. And what S derives? A. So A, A, B. So you got this. And for this, you need to follow any bottom-up parser. Bottom-up parser. That's a RMD, reverse of RMD. So reverse of RMD is so easy. 1, 2, 3 is RMD. This is 1, 2, 3. That's reverse. 3, 2, 1. This S first, so execute this first, then execute this first, then execute this, uh, sorry, second, third. First, second, third. Once is over, this S derives A, that is 2, 2 prints first, and next A derives SB, that is 3, pr three prints next, and S derives AA, 1, 2, 3, 1, that's it. See, I don't need much time for this kind of questions, like when you don't have the attributes, the question is so easy for the exam point of view. Whatever they say, it, if they say top down parser, yes, possible. Top down means LMD. Here, LMD also SAS, leftmost derivation, right? SAS, first this one will print, that is going to be 1, next this one, 3, next 2. So, 1, 3, 2 will be the output if I follow top down parser. Okay? Reverse of top down parser, it's reverse, uh, 2, 3, 1 comes out again. Okay, somehow you can find any kind of uh, evol you can use any kind of evolution to print uh, the output correspond to this input okay so remember this question and this question can be converted to any type of evolution just follow them what they say like they are saying bottom up follow they are saying top down follow because it's not attributed grammar right so it's, it's so easy to find the output with any kind of evolution order if this is a reverse of L attributed evolution, you can also do that. First find the output L attributed evolution, then do, the, do its reverse, you get the reverse of L attributed evolution. So very, very important uh, concept that I'm trying to explain. So what we have done in this video, very, very importantly, you have learned the attributes, but directly we did not use the attributes anywhere. We have used the concepts, 
attributes are two types inherited and synthesized they are not grammars they are attributes using these concepts we have learned the grammars like uh, sdts or sdds syntax directed definitions are two types l attributed grammars and s attributed grammars grammars or definitions both are same and after this we have seen evaluations how you do sdt evaluation or translations sdt evaluations here with attributes without attributes with attributes always we follow only one concept that's better to follow with attributes only l attributed evaluation blindly you follow but when the question is without attributes is given read this one when the sdt is without attributes then follow what is given to you don't assume anything yourself if you are not having clarity now here there are many types here you can uh, follow the data follow given evaluation order if not given you can find out given evaluation order if not given again by default l attributed you can see that if nothing is given follow l attributed evaluation that works if it is applicable that's all thank you so much for watching this video i hope uh, you know uh, sdt concept you have understood uh, how to understand how to uh, you know find out the attribute type and how to uh, find the type of given grammar or definition of the given grammar how to evaluate and if you look at the marks uh, in the exam in olden like before 10 years there were a lot of questions but in the past 10 years you see very few questions still we predict this kind of questions in the coming year so please be ready with the sdts and all the best thank you so much